Welcome to Physics World. Today we discuss about chapter 2 friction. In the last chapter, force, we discussed about what is the importance of force and how it is influencing our life. And we also we have also discussed about types of forces. In those stuff, in the in those types of forces, friction also we have discussed. And we understand that friction is very important in our life and daily activities. With the friction only, I'm able to speak. I can walk. I can ride on the boat. And any vehicle is in motion can be stopped. So without friction, daily activities are not at all possible. In this chapter, we discuss about in detail about friction. And we will also discuss about in which cases friction is advantageous to us and which case friction is harmful to us also. Then why don't we, what are you waiting for? Let us start the class. Now, we have to know about the definition of friction. Before going to the definition of friction, let me explain you about how the friction is applied in different cases. See the first example. Here's a table. On the table, there is a book. You can imagine it is a book or it is a block. Now, a force F is applied on the block. Now, the block is not moving. Or, you apply the force on the block. Block started moving. And at one point of time, the block stopped. See, so this is the distance traveled by the block. Yes, is the distance traveled by the block in this direction. Now the question is, when you apply the force, why the block has moved some distance and then stopped? Why can't it move for infinite amount of time? The answer is simple, because of friction. Now coming to this example, a moving car. So car is in motion. Now, the driver who is sitting on the driving seat applied brakes and he wanted to stop the car. Yes, of course, after traveling some more distance, the car will be stopped. So, do you think that only because of applying the braking, the car has stopped? No. There is another force acting which is opposite to motion of the car and that force is friction. Here also, the block is stopped after traveling some distance. It's only because of an opposing force is acting to this applied force. And the, the opposing force is again friction. So, friction is an opposing force and which opposes the relative motion of the body. So let me write the definition. It is an opposing force, opposing force which opposes relative motion of a body. So here all these words you understand. But coming to this relative motion, quickly after 2 to 3 minutes later, I will explain what is relative motion means. So come back to examples again. So by the definition saying that opposing force, these two forces are opposing the motion of the bodies. That's why those two forces are called friction. Let me explain you more about friction by drawing a free body diagram. See, this is a block which is on the surface and this block is stable like this. Now what are the forces acting on the block? Tell me because last chapter 1 we have discussed. Yes, one force acting downward that is weight of the body W and there is another force at the point of contact of the block and the surface 
and acting in upward direction normal to the point of contact and this is normal force. So these two forces are acting and the block is at rest. When I say block is at rest, this upward force is equal to downward force. Now, see what will happen. Now, I'll apply a forward force like this. I can say forward force, I can say external force. So immediately our common sense says that the block has to move. But the block is not moving. Why? Because to this force, there is another force acting opposite to it. And that force is again friction. That's the reason why still the block is at rest. So the block is at rest along vertically. The block is at rest along horizontally. So vertically the block is at rest because normal force is balanced by weight implies net force acting on the block is 0 n minus w equals 0. Similarly horizontally capital F equals to small f applied force equal to friction implies the net force capital of minus small f equal to 0 again due to vertical direction and horizontal direction net forces are 0 we can say the block is in equilibrium state so here our point of contact is that this friction is the opposing force which opposing this force that's why the body is not moving in the horizontal direction so we understand about what is friction and how it is applied in the different types of objects. Now let me explain you about types of friction. Yes, do we do do friction types of friction exist? Yes, they are existing. Here basically we have two types of frictions. Number one is static friction. Number two is sliding friction. static friction and sliding friction. First of all, we discuss about static friction and then we move on to sliding. So, how can we start? Take an example again. There is a surface. Say it is a ground. It's a ground surface. On the ground surface, there is a heavy block is placed. You can imagine a book also. It's a block. Now, concentrate carefully. I have applied force on the block. Say the force F equals to 1 Newton. 1 Newton I have applied on the block. Block doesn't move. Why? Because there is a friction acting in the opposite direction, which is equal to the force, but opposite to it. So same one newton applied here 